Good afternoon, good evening, it is Weather United here and in today's video we are going to be discussing about that winter storm that could bring quite a bit of snowfall for the upper Great Lakes as well as Michigan followed by a big push of cold Arctic air that is still forecasted to drop southward into the upper Midwest and much of the eastern half of the U.S. by the middle of this week. Now if you are new and you like the content, please consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. You could also check out the Weather United Discord server. There's a link in the description below this video. Also along to go with memberships available too. There's a link in the description to that as well. So it's been a while since we took a look at the visible satellite imagery from the College of Dew page and we can see that, yes, we can't miss it at all. Big trough diving southward into the Great Lakes here. Big circulation, north wind here, westerly wind here, and more southwesterly wind up here. Here's your area of low pressure. So we're talking about instability. We're talking about shower chances, some much colder temperatures here. And this is the biggest story of this week going forward, just how cold it's going to get in the Northern Plains, in the Upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, and even for the Deep South and the Southeast. But also, we have a deep layer ridge that is positioned like so over the Pacific Northwest and the West Coast, bringing warmer temperatures, not so warm here, but we're gonna get back into the upper 80s to low 90s in portions of California for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So it's gonna feel like summer-like all the way back west while all of you back east here will be shivering to death because of how cold it's going to end up being. So the HRRR model this afternoon clearly shows that there are snow chances for northern Michigan, light to moderate snowfall that is anticipated. Otherwise, we have bubbling up convection, percolating showers, thunderstorms in Michigan. These are air mass thunderstorms, by the way, because you have the cold air aloft. You got warmer temperatures at the surface. And so we get more of that convective mixing going on. We get the instability that develops because of that air mass that is in place. This is going to continue all the way to late tonight into early Monday morning. You can see Michigan here, some showers, some snow showers also with um, portions there of Wisconsin getting some light to moderate snowfall, maybe some thunder snow if there is any enough instability out there. Some snow showers across portions there of Quebec, Canada because of the cooler air that's in place. This is going to continue all the way into tomorrow afternoon with shower chances. And yes, there is the threat for lake effect snow here that could be setting up shop over Indianapolis, Indiana, Kokomo, Indiana, towards the north there could get quite a bit of snow. It all depends though exactly where the lake effect snow shows up at. But otherwise, there's also some lake effect rain showers and thunderstorms that are a good possibility over Lake Michigan in itself. Northern portion there of Michigan getting some light to moderate snowfall. So pretty unsettled weather, even for northeastern Ohio, as well as northwestern Pennsylvania, you have the chances for showers and thunderstorms. Yeah, some thunder snow could be the possibility. And this low pressure just keeps on bringing the shower threat into your area probably even through Tuesday night, even into Wednesday. So unsettled weather developing today and this evening in Michigan and the Great Lakes. This will continue into Monday, into Tuesday, and even maybe into Wednesday, October the 20th, I believe. Yes, that's October the 20th. Oh, I was close. October the 19th. Yeah, my days are a little off, so I'm sorry, folks. I'm sorry. Your days probably are off a little bit um, for some unknown reason, right? No, not making fun of you. All right, so here's a look at the snowfall totals. We need to take a look at these because this is showing us how much snowfall is forecasted for your area. So this is going to be location dependent, but some areas like Northern Indiana could get as much as six to 12 inches of snow. I don't believe that you would see probably like 24 inches. That's not gonna end up happening because if it does, that would be quite significant for early October for Northern Indiana standards. For Western half of Michigan, maybe six to 12 inches of snowfall. And yes, the upstate portion of Michigan, you could end up getting maybe as much as 12 to maybe 18 inches of snowfall with localized areas getting close to 20 inches. But again, these amounts that you're seeing 
probably a little aggressive. And also for the Quebec, Canada area, you might see as much as 9 to 12 inches of snowfall with isolated amounts, maybe up to about 13 to 15 inches. And then for Pennsylvania, northwestern portion and westernmost um, state of New York, you might see as much as 3 to 8 inches. And northeastern Ohio might see about 2 to 5 inches of snowfall. But again, very location dependent. Not everyone. This is not a wide spread snowstorm event it is going to be very localized in these areas all right but if you're caught in any of these areas you could be shoveling up a lot of snow if it accumulates quick enough and again that will be moisture and temperature dependent because the more instability the more convective type lake effect snow we get the snow is going to be much heavier than what is forecasted so take this forecast pretty much with a grain of salt because it is quite early still for lake effect snow in these areas. The reason why is also the winds. The winds are going to be kicking. They're going to be howling out there. They're going to be on the increase tonight. So by tomorrow afternoon for your Monday, it's going to be much colder. You have northwesterly winds here over Indiana, over the Illinois region, over Michigan. This is going to bring a lot of cold air down from the north. And look at these winds over Lake Michigan, uh, Lake Superior. It's going to be just kicking. It's going to be blowing out there anywhere between 25 to 40 miles an hour. The winds get stronger. Look at this. Perhaps by Tuesday morning, some of the lake effect areas like right along the coast there of Lake Michigan, Lake Superior, Lake Huron, Lake um, Erie, you can have winds sustained between 30 to maybe 45 miles an hour that would be really strong and you can bet there's going to be some very strong wind gusts on the order of say perhaps let's take a look at this so towards the end of the forecast you may see gusts between 35 to 50 miles an hour getting close to 60 over Lake Michigan so the winds are going to be a big deal with this system not only that combine that with the below average temperatures Wow, it is going to be definitely a different forecast than what you all have been used to. So while it's cold now, it's going to get a lot more colder by Monday and Tuesday because that's when the temperatures will be lowest below average. Speaking of that, here's a look at Tuesday morning, October the 18th. Temperatures all across the Midwest, well below average. In fact, if we step it back uh, to early Monday morning on the 17th, so that's tomorrow. Temperatures 20 to 30 degrees below average. That continues all the way into Tuesday with, look at this, all that blue on your screen indicates temperatures that could be close to 30 degrees below average. I don't think it will be like 35 like you see here. The model may be over exaggerating on this, but it's gonna be far enough below average where I think you might have some record low temperatures at night. And then that continues all the way into Wednesday. So some very cold days coming up, okay? I know it's like, oh, it's not that cold, David. It could be a lot colder than this. But for the time of year we're in, this is October the 17th through the 20th. I mean, you should not have temperatures this cold. It happens once in a while, but particularly this early in the season. This is mid-October, folks. This is not December, January, or even February. Typically, January and February are your coldest months back east. So this is really something for this time of the year. So just take that. Um, just take that into consideration, all right? I'm not trying to hype this up. I'm not trying to over-exaggerate. I'm, um, I'm basically interpreting and extrapolating of what I see here on the models, and I'm relaying that information to the best of my knowledge to you to make sure you all are aware that you need to bring your pets in, your plants and stuff, any livestock that is outside it needs to be protected or covered because again this type of cold will cause a lot of problems and there are freeze warnings which we'll look at here in just a second so that's a look at your temperature anomalies here's a look at your air temperature forecast so of course um day uh, or nighttime lows let's back it up to monday morning temperatures in the uh, low to mid 20s in minnesota in wisconsin in the dakotas as well as iowa for monday morning look at this that doesn't warm up very much at all northern minnesota northernmost wisconsin barely getting out of the 20s during the day so it's 
to be much colder and then that cold air really takes a grip here by Tuesday morning. Temperatures in the 20s, maybe even the low 20s in Tennessee, in the Carolinas, especially for the Appalachians, into the Smoky Mountains. You may have some much colder temperatures expected and then of course some upper teens, low 20s in the Dakotas as well as in Iowa portions there of the Great Lakes gonna definitely feel the chill and the bite to those temperatures it's only gonna warm up a little bit maybe a little bit more on Tuesday thanks to the cooler or thanks to warming heights aloft you're gonna be able to warm up those temperatures a little bit more so it looks like the coldest day overall could be Monday and Tuesday with both very cold overnight lows and really cool over or daytime highs wind chill factors definitely a big deal single digits out there for wind chill values in Minnesota and Wisconsin on Monday morning not getting out of the 20s at all for Monday with how it's going to feel with the wind blowing it's going to be whipping it's going to be some areas of snow blowing snow just a day to kind of stay in for mid-october and then by tuesday morning single digits in 20s and teens for your wind chill values in the upper midwest in the ozarks as well as the northern plains in canada definitely going to feel the chill out there all the way through wednesday it's not even until we get into thursday when these wind chill values will subside now speaking of that we do have um, freeze warnings I believe that's what that is yes freeze warnings or freeze watches I'll have to look that up really quickly here let's actually take a quick sneak peek at that I, I I get confused folks you probably all get confused these are freeze warnings so I did get that right at the first time so I checked that really quick for you all lots of freeze warnings up here okay and we might even extend the reach of that all the way up over here maybe even into Ohio where freeze watches have been issued so make sure you do protect your plants your pets and outdoor plumbing because yes ice expands and it does crack and destroy your piping and plumbing so please please do not you don't want to be paying thousands of dollars for repairs for plumbing because you did not protect them so make sure you do that and read the warnings go to your local national weather service office for the latest information where you can get that all right because yes cold air can also do damage just like hot air can all right so now why is it going to be so cold we talked about this polar vortex over the next three days it's going to be just buckling across the great lakes it's going to be bringing the cooler air that's going to continue all the way to maybe wednesday and thursday before the weather pattern changes so by the time we go into friday we can see more of a zonal flow setting up here more of this westerly flow overall we're not seeing much of a meridial type pattern or morani uh, i can't even say it it's a tongue twister but we're not seeing a wavy pattern like this where we see troughing here where we see ridging here the pattern is going to stabilize a little bit so by the time we go into next weekend october the 23rd and the 24th we might develop the opposite ridging back east here and troughing back west where we get a lot of the cooler weather i draw a smiley face what the heck so there is our cooler weather here's our ridge and warmer weather back east. so a pattern flip is in the offering and that will end us right here where we have a lot of stormy weather wet cold stormy windy uh, back in the pacific northwest and also along the west coast while there's going to be much quieter weather at least with warmer temperatures maybe some showers and thunderstorm events that could be expected on that okay so let's look at your pattern now going on forward taking a look here at our six to ten day temperature outlook so what is it looking like is it going to stay cold in the great lakes the answer is no it's going to be warming up by the end of this week you'll start to notice the warm-up finally things thaw out whatever snow hits the ground will thaw out probably even a few days after it has fallen in the great lakes region so yes you'll have to shovel it but i believe it believe it or not it's not going to be much of an annoyance after we get past this week so likelihood of above average temperatures in the great lakes and much of the uh, midwest and the eastern u.s with below average temperatures in the pacific northwest and along the west coast that goes for also the 8 to 14 day forecast very similar warm back east because of that pattern flip and cold back west because of the trophy type weather pattern that we're going to be inside so 
That's good. We get a pattern flip. Uh, I guess it's even after all. Someone's going to get the cooler weather. That's my area. I'm glad. I'm excited. I'm excited for fall to finally arrive. It's been a while. We have not had a fall or a true fall feel here in, since last year. Even so, we have had temperatures slightly below average. The pattern just doesn't feel like fall. doesn't feel crisp out there, in other words. Precipitation chances, wet and cool back west, and drier and warmer back across the New England coast. The mid-Atlantic coast going to see leaning below chances for below average rainfall or snowfall with above average chances back west. That goes for the next 8 to 14 days where you have a, an above average threshold there over the Pacific Northwest. Oregon, Washington, you have a 50 to 60% chance of that occurring with a chances of above average, then leaning above for most areas in the United States. So good news, California, we could use the above average threshold chances at least leaning above with rainfall. We need it. We need the rain. We need these fires to be extinguished because... I mean, fire season in Northern California, the Pacific Northwest is supposed to be ending right now, but nope, it's just getting started because we have not had the rain that we really need to extinguish and moisten the soils up to prevent uh, fires from forming, all right? Well, that's going to do with this forecast, everyone. If you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing. Uh, help support the work that I do because winter season is right around the corner. And you know what that means, right? That means um, Weather United is going to be live streaming um, severe winter storm events like Winter Storm Keenan. Remember that storm? That hit the Northeast. That brought a lot of snow. So if you're new to the channel, you like live streaming coverage, I promise you all, some people have been asking, when are you going to stream again? It's coming, okay? I promise. I promise. Fingers crossed. It's coming to Weather United. It's just there hasn't been anything to stream on. So if you are new, you want to support me, um, subscribe, share, and like. And also, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and much more. All those links are in the description. You could also join our Weather United Discord server. There's a link in the description below this video. I would uh, love you all to be part of the community that I am in and to present it to you all. All right? Hope to see you all there. Thanks for watching. Be back with you more maybe tomorrow with more weather content.